Hey folks, Stronghold Crafter Kev here with another video. Welcome to my channel. And uh, my tutorial continues with part four of how to make a courtyard out of foam. Yes. So, uh, before I begin, uh, I'd like to apologize for uh, part three of the video series. Uh, the camera got a little too shaky, even for my taste. I'm sorry about that. I will work on rectifying that in the future. Uh, bear with me. Um, anyway, in this video we're going to go into the carving aspect in more depth. Uh, so, anyway, if, if you like more information about my craft, uh, I have a website which is strongholdsoffantasy.com. Uh, check it out when you get a chance. And uh, feel free to uh, subscribe because I have a lot more things coming down the road and you don't, you don't want to miss out. Okay, see you in a bit. Hi folks, welcome to part four of this tutorial. And as you can see here, I started doing the carving uh, with the cracks and stuff. You can see the difference here where I have a pattern here and that hasn't been done yet. So watch me closely here and I'll show you what I'm doing. Okay, so we just take it in there, follow the line, and it's as simple as that. Now I'm doing these by hand because it just would be a real pain in the butt to try to do this uh, with the uh, the sled, and I'd be picking it up, putting it down. So you just have to be very careful how deep you take the uh, tip and place it in the foam. And um, by the way, when you do the cracks, make sure the edges connect to the other groove so it looks like it makes uh, like it, it was together as part of the same grooving uh, cracking pattern there because if you if you come fall short on the edge there it's going to look weird uh, so I will continue this carving and and uh, show you what I'll come up with and as you can see here we've got some angel hairs that has have to be flicked out when you get done so hold on now take this further all right this is how it looks after uh, doing the carving uh, it's a lot to really focus on but uh, basically all the cracks are carved into the uh, foam and I'm still thinking it needs something else for detailing so what I thought about doing was either uh, cutting out some pieces or uh, putting in some divots or dings and stuff because it looks just a little too neat still so I will look into that and let you know hold on alright I marked some places where I'm going to put some dings uh, with the marker so I'm just going to basically take the uh, the uh, engraving tool and I'm just going to stick it in to the foam and burn it away a little bit and it'll be like uh, you know like miniature potholes if you will alright hold on alright I'm just gonna show one real quick just to see what I'm show what I'm talking about here so I'm just taking the engraving tool and I'm just going to plunge it into the foam and you're gonna get a variance in the depth but as long as you go down too deep it should be okay so remember it's going to go through like a hot knife through butter like everything else so just keep that in mind and I will finish that alright that's done uh, you don't want to go too crazy with that because it'll look a little too busy but another thing I thought of you can do uh, is you can very carefully uh, burn away, chip away carefully at uh, a corner piece just to break up that grid effect a little bit. Uh, that way it looks like something got chipped away, broken, and it's lost. Uh, but you got to be very careful when you do that because, like I said, this thing's going to burn really quickly through it. So I'm going to do that some more on a random pattern and go from there. And I'm not going to go through the tedious stuff of just marking with my marker. I'm just going to uh, just improvise, so hold on. Alright folks, I did some more carving, and I noticed that some of these patterns were running together a little bit too closely. 
So I thought, well, one thing you can do also is you can go back and alter the patterns you already did. So let's say, all right, I don't like these two patterns. They look too much uh, similar in style. So I'm going to take my engraving tool here. And very carefully, I'm going to just add another random line to it. There. So now it looks nothing like that one. And it brings out a, another uh, random uh, design which wasn't even incorporated. I even did some... Uh, let's see if I can point one out here. This... Uh, triangular piece here that wasn't there before I just took I just took the engraving tool and just ran it through so just something to keep in mind uh, look over your board and do some random carvings even if you didn't mark them down and of course yeah they're permanent so you can't really get rid of them unless you want to use filler to cover them up um, but that's another thought to put in uh, in a perspective so I'm going to continue doing this a little bit more and I'll let you know what comes up all right, I've added a little bit more uh, creative lines to some of the uh, patterns, but uh, something else you can do with the engraving tool when I think about it is uh, you can just uh, randomly put some uh, divots in like that. Uh, it will definitely uh, create a different look, and it'll just enhance the uh, the age and the damage you already have in place. So, I will continue that and let you know how it turns out. Alright, after looking over my board a little bit long, more, uh, I noticed that there were some patterns that were too familiar with other ones. So, with the you know engraving tool, I added some more lines. And I went a little crazy and did some more divots and stuff. Pardon the shaking there. And uh, I thought about something, and it's like, you know, some of these things need to be roughed up a little bit. Well, one thing you can do is you can take the blunt end of some kind of object and just tap on it. You can see there, it's putting in an impression that won't go away. Um, but uh, that's something you just got to experiment with and go crazy, uh, if you will, because that way it will give more realism to... Uh, the fact that stone is not always smooth like you want it to be. And, you know, like I said, I want to give it like an aged look. Now, when this courtyard is done, it can be either a courtyard or you can use it as like a dungeon board. All you have to do is just add the walls and there you go. So I will continue with that part and show you what I have come up with. Okay, now, as I went straight down, I caused these dings right here. But you can also, uh, depending on how hard you hit it, will determine how deep it'll go. And you can do something random like that, which will definitely improve the quality of your, you know, weathering. So just see, keep that in mind. And I'm going to do a little bit more tapping here and show what I come up with. Okay, folks. Uh, I think I'm about done with this. It still has a slightly smooth texture, but you can see uh, I put plenty of dings in the uh, overall board here. So that'll definitely give it some random uh, looking damage. Uh, I also recarved some of the channels uh, so that there's a corresponding uh, pattern you can you might be able to pick out there of some uh, of a large square in the middle. Um, the other thing is, if you hit too hard with the with the punching, it's going to crack the uh, the surface, which is fine if that's what you're striving for. Just keep that in mind. Uh, so now that I'm done with all the uh, imprompt damage, I'm going to uh, take care of the uh, angel hairs that have been annoying me now. So basically, that's just going to take a little bit of uh, effort, but you can try using uh, a file, but I warn you, if you use a file, it's going to cause some extra damage of, of uh, raking and stuff. Or you can just use your fingers and just try to rough them out easily and uh, 
go from there. Okay, I've got about all the uh, angel hairs I can get out that I can tolerate. Uh, it's very hard to get all of them out and I'm not too worried about it because uh, they kind of look like uh, they get painted over and, and uh, they can be pulled out then sometimes and the other thing is uh, they sometimes uh, add a, like a cobwebby like effect which is kind of cool. Uh, now if you're concerned about how square your board is you can get one of these uh, uh, squares here. They sell them at most hardware stores. And I checked the edges and most of them are fairly square but not totally square on the edges, but that's no big deal. I, I'm not trying to get something critically seamless. I said before I was going to square these off, but I thought, nah, it's not worth it at this point. Um, but if they line up against other boards, they just won't be perfectly seamless. That's all. They'll just uh, meet up with uh, some slight gaps. Uh, but I'm not putting other boards up against it, so that's not critical at this point. If it was, then I would advise... You know, if you're doing more than one board and you're going to have them up against each other, yeah, you definitely want to make sure they have a nice seam uh, when they go up against each other. But uh, basically, I might smooth uh, the edges down a little bit uh, and make sure they're not having anything that's protruding um, at this point. So this is pretty much uh, what I've got done so far. And... We will go from there in the next segment. So I hope uh, this gives a lot of insight and is helpful with um, anyway. That's all for now.